What's good, Josh Boy Ross? Back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out ten WWE superstars who briefly revived an old gimmick. Now, sometimes wrestlers get into their retro bag and they may bring out a, a old gimmick or old character that they used to portray back in the day to kind of i guess you could say relive and bring back that nostalgia for certain matches uh the most recent one i can remember is when edge tapped into his brood bag when he came out there to uh confront seth rollins i thought that was a a, a very cool moment to bring out the brood you know what I'm saying the in the brood in himself i thought that was pretty cool so we're gonna check this out by wrestling Lane. we appreciate all the love and support let's do this thing it's not uncommon for an iconic wwe wrestler to decide to revert back to a prior gimmick this is usually a brief nostalgia run which reminds fans of the golden years of pro wrestlers careers mm -hmm. it goes without saying that some gimmick revivals have been better than others Sentina, but for the gimmick revival the, to work the there should be an obvious and compelling story to the tell cringe. with the old gimmick and they shouldn't just bring it back to sell merchandise or give the wrestlers something new to do. But which times were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who revived an old gimmick. The Santino one. Dude, I, I, get that off my TV, bro. Get that shit off my TV. That's it. Be sure to subscribe so and hit that notification just, bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive videos. Also, check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Can't Number 10, Edge. There we go. Since Edge came out of retirement in 2020, he has experimented with one of his classic gimmicks. When Edge was first getting started in WWE, one of his first major angles was a storyline which led him teaming up with Gangrel and Christian in the Brood. This stable would become one of the most popular groups of the Attitude Era mm -hmm. as it got Gothic vampire esque presentation resonated with fans mm -hmm. at the time. They used to scare me Fast as a forward kid. to Edge's feud with Seth Rollins in 2021, and Edge would start to show signs of returning to the brood persona. Edge would perform a bloodbath on Rollins, and he would even hint that he's going back to a dark place. Love Edge it. Edge would even use the brood entrance at SummerSlam for his match against Rollins, so great. which was a nice surprise to fans. So Since good. Since the SummerSlam match with Rollins, Edge has reused the brood entrance on several occasions, so it's mainly used to enhance Edge's character and give his pay-per-view matches a big fight feel. When Edge turned heel in 2022 and formed the Judgment Day stable, the stable at first hand had a rather gothic undertone and clearly took inspiration from the brood. However, just a few months after the stable formed, Edge would revert back to the ever so popular rated mm -hmm. R superstar persona. Number okay. 9, Mark Henry. Oh. Man, I, I loved it, man. It, can we just say Edge and uh and uh Seth Rollins easily just fantastic feud they had. Just great. From start to finish, just great. Former world champion Mark Henry has had his fair share of gimmicks during his career. Perhaps the most infamous of these was his sexual chocolate yep, persona sexual that chocolate. Henry had during the Attitude Era. <laughs> this saw Henry turn into a ladies man and eventually have a child with Mae Young. Yeah, In 2010, wild. Henry would decide to bring back a gimmick for one night only. This would be at the old school Raw event and Henry would use the sexual chocolate theme. <laughs> it was great to see him use a classic persona even if it was for just one night. Number 8, JBL. <laughs> when Brock Lesnar and Goldberg <laughs> left WWE in 2004, WWE needed to create a new star. Vince McMahon would look towards APA member Bradshaw in the hope of making him a top guy. Bradshaw would turn into John Bradshaw Layfield and would be mm -hmm. instantly thrown into a WWE title feud with Eddie Guerrero. Which JBL worked. was now a hateful, villainous, rich snob, Which and worked. the gimmick change worked wonders. It did. JBL would even ascend to the top of WWE, and, and WWE had successfully created a new top heel. Yep, they even did. though JBL found his success with his JBL persona, he did revert back to his APA persona on a number of occasions. The first of these was in 2007 when Hornswoggle had hired the APA for protection. <laughs> then the APA would reform an appearance in 2012 and 2015, respectively. Number seven, Mick Foley. Hey, I will say this about JBL, bro. He stepped up to the plate. I hated him, and that was great because he was just kind of lost in the shuffle with APA. People, you know, rocked with him. You know, he's with uh, Ron Simmons, but. Bro, when I tell you, once he went to the I'm the rich guy, rich Texan, you know what I'm saying? Oh, bro, people hated him, and that's what made it so good. His heel run, highly underrated. Now, the three faces of Foley element of Mick Foley's character meant that WWE could always go between three very different characters. Mm -hmm. Whilst Foley would predominantly use the Mankind persona during his full-time run in WWE, he enjoyed the benefits of bringing Do back love. one of the other three gimmicks from time to time. 
The Cactus, Cactus Jack, Jack gimmick would be used randomly throughout the Attitude Era, and the most well-known revival of the gimmick was in 2000 for Foley's legendary feud with Triple H. Great feud, In too. relation to Dude Love, Foley decided to bring back this gimmick in 1998 for a feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin, but he also returned to the gimmick for one night only on Raw 1000. Foley would also bring back the Mankind persona in 2005. This was at Taboo Tuesday pay-per-view as yeah, fans could vote in relation that. to which face of Foley they wanted to see that, face uh, Carlito. The so fans surprisingly skip, uh, voted for Mankind and the Mankind persona would be back for one match only. Number 6. Kofi Kingston oh, Kofi. In 2016, The New Day would take part in their segment which would see them enter the Time Machine. When the New Day member Kofi Kingston stepped out of the machine, he had suddenly reverted back to his 2009 <laughs> persona. Kingston would be dancing along to his classic SOS theme song and would suddenly be talking in a Jamaican accent. <laughs> Kingston would come. I remember he was a fake Jamaican, bro. And a brief promo which declared that the Jamaican sensation is back one more time and it looks like there's trouble in paradise. It was a humorous segment that was a treat for fans that watched Kingston during the early days of his boom, career. Boom, Number boom. five, Kevin Nash. <laughs> when rumors circulated in January 2011 that Kevin Nash was going to make a surprise return at the Royal Rumble, fans expected it to either be the NWO version of Nash or the Nash that was in WWE in 2003. However, what they got completely blew the roof off the arena. Nash would revert back to his Diesel persona, mm -hmm. the persona he won the WWE title with. Nash using the Diesel character received one of the loudest ovations of all time, and it was clear that fans remembered and loved the character. Yeah, he did get a lot of Unfortunately, when that. Nash returned to WWE once again in the summer of 2011, yeah. he would be using his standard Kevin Nash persona, and the Diesel character would be officially retired once again. Number 4. Bray Wyatt one of the top mm. feuds during SmackDown and Oh man, the Bray Wyatt speculation. He's returning at this pay-per-view. He's returning at this show. He's returning. You guys, y'all can't let it go. Just, just wait for him. If he does return, wait for him to return. Like y'all, boy, I hope y'all keep the same energy. If he does return, I hope you guys keep that same energy and keep showing that type of passion for him on the show. If he does return, like Jesus. Y'all, love y'all some Bray. Bray's awesome. It's just, if he returns, let him return. Jeez. In the summer of 2020, was the feud between oh, the fiend God. Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. The two were previously members of the Wyatt family, so there was a ton of potential in the feud. Mm -hmm. One of the most memorable moments of the feud saw Wyatt revert back to his original persona. The classic Wyatt was back along with his colorful shirt and fedora. You look like you've seen a ghost, Wyatt would declare to Strowman. Mm -hmm. The segment received widespread praise from fans, and it's rare that the WWE recognizes their own continuity, never mind devoting an entire segment to character Which was history cool, and which backstory. was very cool. Number three, Hulk Hogan. Upon returning to WWE in 2002, Hogan was presented as a heel. He would be using his villainous NWO gimmick, which had brought him great success in mm -hmm. WCW. However, WWE quickly realized that fans had no interest in booing the former. Yeah, they couldn't boo him. They they tried, like they tried to keep him healed, but it didn't work, bro. It didn't work. It, it there's it did not work. They 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 couldn't. They tried their best, but it just didn't work, bro. A WWE champion. This all came to a head at WrestleMania 18 and Hogan's mm -hmm. showdown with The Rock. The fans adored Hogan so yeah. much so that Hogan became the default babyface in the yeah. match. WWE. I just watching that crowd go crazy. And just the goosebumps I got from watching that, bro. The crowd just lost it. They wanted the Hulkster back. You know what I'm saying? They were forced to turn Hogan back into a lovable babyface, and he would bring back the red and yellow for a nostalgia run, which included him winning the WWE title for the final time in his career. Number two, John Cena. I believe it or not, John Cena was almost fired from WWE before he debuted the Doctor of Thugonomics character. Wow. This character didn't just save Cena's career, Damn. but it also propelled him into superstardom. Did not know Cena that. would cut humorous yet brutal pre-match raps on his opponents before his matches. This became so popular that WWE had no choice but to turn Cena babyface. Eventually, WWE decided on Cena being the top guy in the company, mm -hmm. and this resulted in Cena dropping the rap element of his gimmick entirely. Cena would actually bring back the gimmick on two separate occasions. The, the first of these was in 2012, as he would revert to the Dr. Thugonomics persona during the build for his match with The Rock at WrestleMania 28. Cena would also bring back the gimmick for a special appearance at WrestleMania 35, which was one of the highlights of the entire pay-per-view. The last appearance of the popular gimmick to date is in the Firefly Funhouse which match at WrestleMania match, 36. Man. 
and this would see Cena enter a weird time loop of experiencing all his prior gimmicks. God, that was and so number fun. one, The Undertaker. Upon being buried alive by Kane at 2003 <laughs> Survivor Series pay-per-view, it was <laughs> yep. rumored that Taker would be returning to a dark persona. Whilst the American badass and big evil personas were popular, it was clear that it was time for The Undertaker to bring back the classic gimmick. This would take place at WrestleMania 20, as The Undertaker would return back to his supernatural gimmick of the dead man and even be joined by his legendary manager Paul Bearer. What made this version of the dead man work was that The Undertaker kept virtually the same moveset as he used mm -hmm. during his ABA days, meaning that Taker could still have fantastic matches with anyone on the roster. In 2020, The Undertaker was set to have his final match. This would be a boneyard match against Styles, and for his final match, Taker brought back the American badass yeah, persona. Is, oh, this feud love. completely broke down kayfabe barriers as AJ would call The Undertaker yep. by his real name, Mark Calloway. Yeah, bro. This, oh, this was so cool. I wish it could have been in front of an audience. This was so fucking cool, bro. Like, oh, I love this. This was they, that that boneyard match was so fun. If you haven't seen it, go check. It's it's just it's entertaining. It's fun as hell. This was a huge deal as Taker had typically been reserved in breaking kayfabe in any manner. Yep. But Taker clearly thought that it was time to do something new. Leading up to the match, Taker would cut chilling promos, which mm -hmm. were a mix of his ABA persona, the Dead Man, and Mark Calloway. Yep. This final work of the Undertaker received widespread praise from virtually all the WWE fans. When the Boneyard match actually came, Taker had fully transitioned back to the beloved American Badass yeah, persona. Yeah, so but there cool, you have it, folks. Bro. 10 WWE wrestlers. Oh, that was such a good produced match for the time period that we was in, you know, during COVID, bro. The, you know, whole lockdown. Oh, that was such a great produced match. Easily a match I can go back and watch again. The promos leading up to it were uh, just fantastic man so comment down below let me know what's your favorite wrestlers gimmick like who has the best gimmick that you've ever seen in wrestling it doesn't even have to be in wwe it can be in whatever company i appreciate all love and support roll to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on next one